This is the toughest animal on Earth, the tardigrade. Deep in the most extreme environments on the planet, this tiny creature survives against all odds. Wait, what's that? These, sh these shots are from my backyard? Hold on. Well, today I'm in my literal backyard because we're looking for something really special. This is something that might be in your backyard too. See, it turns out these microscopic, incredible creatures are kind of everywhere. That's right. You may have heard of the water bear and its claim to fame of being able to survive in space. These creatures are not just limited to the most inhospitable habitats on Earth, but are actually around us all the time, even in the most unlikely places. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and it's my mission to uncover the secrets of the natural world, hidden creatures and phenomena that we normally have no idea are existing right alongside us. And the tardigrade is exactly the kind of bizarre animal that I would bet you didn't expect to be lurking right at home in your backyard. Today, I'm heading out into the woods in search of a microscopic creature, an alien life form I've wanted to see ever since I got my first microscope. All right, so I'm basically looking for microbial mats, areas that look kind of like moss or seaweed. You can kind of see right there, there's a an area of algal growth right there. I think that'll be a good sample. The tardigrade gets its nickname, the water bear, from its bear-like movement and even claws. They use those hooks to grapple with substrate in the microscopic world, causing them to clumsily bumble about just like a real bear. But the water part of the name comes from their habitat. These are animals that need water to survive. Despite their title of toughest animal on earth, these creatures are a bit more sensitive than you'd think. And given their diet of algae and microorganisms, I'm sampling the substrate and microbial mats of the different sources of water in my yard with the hopes of finding one of these amazing creatures. They're everywhere, but when you're dealing with a microscopic animal in an expanse of creek, it's like searching for a needle in an ocean-sized haystack. We're gonna need some luck to get one of these water bears up close and under the microscope. Look at that. That is gross looking. You would not want to drink that. But any luck, one of these vials with all that weird stringy algae looking gunk in it, one of these vials will have our tardigrade. To find our water bear, we have to look really closely. In aquatic environments, they'll be clinging to the algae and substrate, hunting for other microscopic creatures. And while we're searching, there's a good shot we'll see some of those too. Well, there's something. These guys right here, right there, you see them? That is a copepod, a rather large one. I would almost bet you could see that with the naked eye. It would look like a tiny little speck. These guys are like tiny little microscopic shrimp and you can tell they're copepods due to the antennae. They have kind of a flattened appearance or a cylindrical appearance, and they are strange. Wow, look at all the activity. Look at these huge copepods. Look at that, there's eggs underneath them. Just like a crayfish, the females carry their eggs underneath them. These copepods are extremely fast. The tardigrade actually gets its name from its slow movements. Its name literally means slow walker. So I'm looking very carefully through these samples, watching for something slowly meandering through the substrate. But every glimpse of movement could be another strange alien creature. Have a look at this one. This is another microscopic crustacean. It's an ostracod. Now, I can tell it's an ostracod because it has that weird shell around it. See, at first look, you'd, you'd see this thing, like, oh, that's some kind of large protozoan, right? A single-celled organism, but then it moves. See, it actually has little legs inside that shell. It's almost like a, like a hermit crab, but on a microscopic level. Look at that thing. Look at the way it moves. Those weird little spindly legs. And you can see it actually has two segments to its shell, like a clam. They're often described as having like a bivalve-like shell, but you can actually see through it since of the light. You can see the tiny little eye in the front there, those tiny little legs. It's like a clam-shrimp hybrid. You look at this thing, you're like, how could something so alien evolve on a planet where I live? You know, if, if, if I was shown this picture and it was, you know, in a science fiction movie, it wouldn't feel out of place. This, this is an earthling too. It can be easy to get lost in the microscopic world. Hours of pouring through samples, coming across the most bizarre creatures, insect larvae, reminiscent of dragons, 
microscopic mites that make your skin crawl, and lots of other bizarre, squirming things, but no sign of our tough little water bear. I'm not giving up yet. See, there's one more trick we can try, and believe it or not, it's actually the reason why I'm 100% certain these incredible, bizarre creatures are also right at home in your backyard. And that's because, apparently, you can find them in moss. If you've ever set foot in a forest, you're probably familiar with mosses and lichens. These may look simply like tiny little plants and fungi, but to a microorganism, these can be high-rise apartment complexes and hunting grounds. I'm sampling moss from all over my yard, as we'll need a good amount of diversity if we hope to catch a tardigrade. These samples need to soak in water for a few hours, which will hopefully awaken and draw out our long-awaited water bears. Let me tell you, I, uh, I didn't expect searching for a tardigrade to be this difficult. I thought we'd have one by now. And, you know, getting out into nature, looking for some of the weirdest and craziest creatures, sometimes it, it, it goes like this. So if you're enjoying this video and you wanna come with on my journey to discover the secrets of the natural world all around us, literally in our backyards, consider subscribing and join me every Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern for new adventures. Now, let's go ahead and check these samples and see Hey, tardigrades are home. With each sample, I squeezed the water onto a slide and carefully scoured it, watching for movement. Sample after sample passed, and I had seen quite a few unusual microscopic life forms. But still, hours into my search, there was no sign of the tardigrades. It was getting very late into the night. I don't see anything. As the hour grew later and fatigue crept into my eyes, I honestly began to think I needed to throw the towel in and either scrounge up new moss samples or scrap this video entirely. My biggest target, an animal I've wanted to see ever since I first picked up a microscope, seemed to be slipping through my fingers. I moved on to the last sample, a scraping of lichen I took off of a pine tree. It was my last chance. Oh, <gasps> no! Did I see a leg? <gasps> Wait! Are you- Hold on. Hold on. <gasps> it has legs! We got one! We got one! Oh, look at that! I've seen so many freaking rotifers. Like, they're cool, don't get me wrong. But like, right there. There it is. Look how chubby he is! Now this is something I've been looking for for a long time, and I, I, I mean that, because it took a lot longer to find one of these creatures than I really thought it would. This is a tardigrade, and this might be one of the strangest animals, a very creepy crawly animal at that. You might be asking Spencer, is this related to bugs? The answer is sort of. So tardigrades are actually in their own group that contains only tardigrades. There's really nothing else that's closely related to them, but tardigrades, velvet worms, and all arthropods kind of fall under one big group called panarthropoda. Look at, look at him moving there. These weird little legs that he has are not jointed like an arthropod, but they are covered, as is his whole body, in a little bit of a weird cuticle which these animals do shed when they grow. You might be looking at this little animal here and, and thinking about how does it move, right? If it's if it's microscopic, it, it can't have complex organ systems, right? Wrong. In fact, at this scale, the way the organ systems work might be even more complex than ours. When you're at this size of animal, every single cell counts. Tardigrades do in fact have muscles. You also kind of notice these weird blobs these little blobs kind of function as a circulatory system. You know, they're too small to actually have veins, right? So they have basically these free-floating cells inside their body that deliver nutrients, all their little necessary chemicals for life to the rest of their cells. And the way they breathe is kind of similar to the way a salamander breathes. They actually breathe by diffusing the oxygen in their environment into their skin. Now you might be asking Spencer, is, is this an indicator species like a salamander is? And well, no, because the reason tardigrades are so unbelievably special is they actually can survive pretty much anywhere. Um, this particular species is a terrestrial 
tardigrade. The terrestrial ones have a really special ability. Moss and lichens have a tendency to dry out for periods. If it's really dry, there's not a lot of rain, the environment inside there dries out. But that's the environment where this creature lives, and it needs that moist habitat to be able to breathe and function. So how does it survive? Well, tardigrades are able to undergo something that we call cryptobiosis, where they can actually shut down and compact themselves into a smaller, waterless state. And they can survive like that for decades. Certain species of them have been recorded to even withstand the vacuum of space. While this isn't a great environmental indicator, these are really interesting to medical science and NASA because the abilities this animal can use to survive in a shutdown hibernating state could be really useful for interplanetary travel and all kinds of other really cool science fiction stuff. This animal right here is kind of like the key to making Star Wars real, which is exciting as a huge Star Wars fan. That is insane. My first ever tardigrade found in my literal, well, front yard, but backyard. A little bit of luck, odds are you could probably find one too. If this tardigrade was lurking just feet from my front door, you have to ask, what unusual creatures might be hiding in plain sight in your backyard? The natural world is full of unusual secrets, and one of the strangest I've come across was an insect on an expedition to Texas Hill Country. This strange looking tiny creature is actually the world's smallest cricket, and if you want to learn about its unique and outlandish secrets, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.